What the heck is going on in the market? <laughs> okay, what's up guys? So today is a fun one. We're gonna talk about what the heck is going on in the real estate market. It is absolutely insane out there and is different from everything you experienced over the last two years. So we're gonna talk about some of those factors, uh, but we're not gonna get real in depth because guess what? I'm not an economist. Uh, and you probably aren't either. If you are, please drop some comments below uh, detailing some more of these details and tell me why I'm wrong on all this. But we're gonna talk about the market specific to real estate, some of the factors that are influencing that right now um, because there's a lot of them and what that means for you if you're looking to buy or sell or if you're just curious about what the heck is going on. So as always, Welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel. If you're a new viewer, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, do all that good stuff. We come out with these videos every single week. There's some good information that we put out every single week there though that you can find some nuggets of value in um, like this one. So, and if you're ever looking to make a move, buying or selling anywhere across the country, give us a shout. We can either help you out or connect you with someone who can, 812-315-3850. Let's dive right in. So first of all, we're going to talk about kind of some of the statistics that we're experiencing now. What I always tell people is real estate is so hyper local, right? So not just local, hyper local. That means even down to the neighborhood. So when we look at comparable sales for people about to list their home, trying to figure out the price that they should put on their home, ideally we're looking down into their specific neighborhood. Obviously that's not always realistic sometimes depending on the property, but this neighborhood compared to one right down the road might sell for completely different prices. How old are the homes? There's all these different factors, right? That go into it that can really affect it. So that means if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, um, we're in Southern Indiana, if you're in New York, all these places are gonna be different. We all have some of the same factors impacting us along with some different ones, right? And so you can get some information out of this, but at the end of the day, if you're in one of those markets looking to make a move, let us put you in touch with someone who can give you a little more information on what's going on specifically in your area, but this will give you a broad general idea. So in our area, home sales this year are down 16%, um, right? That's huge to see home sales go in 2022 into 2023 down 16%. Um, days on market, meaning how long are these homes sitting on the market before they find a buyer is 11 days. Like that's a big, big difference. Now, realistically though, um, 11 days on market more is still a strong seller's market and homes are moving very, very quickly. Um, but it is different and we're starting to feel that continue to slow down even more, especially as we head into the winter months and interest rates are still pretty high compared to what we've experienced in the past couple of years. Historically, average interest rates are 7%. Go back into the 1980s and you're looking at 15, 18% interest rates. It's really not that bad, but it does make a difference when people are feeling the impact of inflation, um, higher cost of goods all over the place, and then they're used to 3% interest rates, or they might even have a 3% interest rate that they don't want to give up. So these are all kind of uh, factors to consider as to why things are moving that way. But specifically, inflation is probably the biggest one because it trickles down into a lot of these different areas. Inflation, basically think of it as the power of your dollar when you spend it. Inflation has been going through the roof. That's why when you go to get a hash brown at McDonald's, it used to be 50 cents and now it's $3. Your cars are higher, like everything is more expensive to go out and eat dinner is like 20% higher or something ridiculous like that then it's made a big difference, right? And so that's one factor, just because people are having to spend so much money on other things, it's impacting the housing market because they can't afford to buy a home when they're spending all their money on basic necessities that you need every single day. Now, as a result of that, if you're familiar with the Federal Reserve and the way that that operates, they're trying to curb that inflation and get it back down to a more normal level. They've been trying to do this for a long time now. And so as they raise their rates, it then goes, trickles down and impacts the banks and then your mortgage rates, which is why those mortgage rates continue to go up, which is why we've gone from about three to about 8% at the time that we're recording this. And then eventually the goal there though, is once that curbs spending, which is the whole goal of it is to reduce spending, which is working why home sales are down 16%. Once your spending is back lower, inflation rate goes down also and to a more normal rate. And then at some point, hopefully, the Fed will say, hey, we're not gonna do this anymore. And then they will slowly, slowly start to bring those interest rates back down. Now they can't do it too quickly because that can create other issues in and of itself and send us right back into the problem we've had. But up until this point, that's what they've been doing. That's why your interest rates are going higher, which is impacting the sales of homes. 
So that's something to think about um, along with that. Also, not to mention that right now we're in November, uh, this time of year slows down in the real estate market. Now, homes still sell, right? And there are some benefits to listing in your colder winter months. People who are buying are much more serious about buying. They're not just willy nilly out there just looking at homes and tire kickers. Like if they're moving in the middle of winter, especially where we're at, where temps can get, you know, anywhere from zero to 30 degrees on fairly regular, I think our average winter temperature is like 40, 45. They're going to be serious because no one likes to move in that weather unless you're a psychopath. Uh, so those people that are looking are much more serious as well as you have less competition, right? Most people are waiting till March, April, May to list their home. So what you're seeing is then there are fewer options on the market, fewer buyers, but fewer homes for sale. So that's something to take into consideration because then if you wait till May or March, more people are going to list their homes. Yes, you have more buyers, but you also have more competition. So best time to sell is whenever you need to sell realistically. It might change depending on your personal situation, your personal market, all those things, um, but it's gonna have an impact. So long story short, what we're looking at is high inflation rate. I believe it all goes back to that. Um, that leads to high interest rates and also your winter months. Now, what's gonna be interesting though, as we go um, into these future months is we've got several obviously global wars going on, Ukraine, Russia, you have Israel uh, and Palestine, the Gaza Strip, Hamas, that whole conflict that's happening right now. Um, and so it's gonna be very interesting to see how those things play out, especially if any of them get worse and more countries get involved, that can have a huge impact on our government, our day-to-day -day lives, um, your interest rates, all those things. So we'll see how that works out as well as an election season is coming up. You might hate it, but it is gonna make a big impact. So what we see, no matter what side you're on, is the current administration is always going to promise things, which can just the promise of things can really impact the market, as well as they might try and enact policies to help spending, inflation, interest rates, the real estate market in order to prove that they should stay in administration. And on the flip side of that, whatever party is not in power is also going to do the same dang thing. So they're going to make promises um, which could boost or you know tank the economy, depending on how likely they are to get elected. As well as if we do have a new administration, um, you know, come November and then into January when they actually get uh, put into office, uh, policies are probably going to change, especially if it's not just the president, but Congress also switches in some way, form or fashion. So all those factors are hugely impactful to the real estate market. Historically, though, we are feeling the slowdown, but it's still a really good market. But we are going to see a lot of things change. So the National Association of Realtors predicts 20% of realtors out of the business next year. So when you're looking to sell, that's going to impact who you're going to be able to choose. A lot of litigation surrounding real estate nationally. So if you haven't heard of any of that, you can look it up, but that might impact how you use a realtor and whether you can have buyer representation, whether you have to pay them, whether the seller continues to pay them, a lot of things going on. So over this next year, and especially over the next five years, we're going to see a lot of moving pieces. Um, but there's no reason to freak out, in my opinion. I think everything's moving just fine, but it is a time that you really have to consider is now the right time to sell. These prices, if they do start to pull back, that's going to make a big difference. Some markets around the country have already had this huge, huge pullback where homes are sitting on the market way longer and prices have gone way down. We in the Midwest here um, don't really see that as much. Our highs are not as high, our lows are not as low. So if you're in an area like us, it's still probably a pretty good time where if you're in one of these bigger cities that are experiencing um, much more of a swing, maybe you do need to sit on it, especially if you just bought it recently um, and you have the ability to stay in that home. So there's also options if you do have high credit card debt or something like that, um, but a low interest rate in your house, um, it's worth at least a conversation with a loan officer who knows what they're doing and who's going to be honest with you of maybe it is wise to get a higher interest rate and pay off this debt because if your credit card debt is at 20% and you have a 3% mortgage and you can go to an 8% mortgage, you're still better off taking equity out of your home and paying off those credit card debts as long as you're not going to get back into that situation. So. The economy is doing a lot of weird things. It's impacting you, it's impacting me, it's impacting all of us. So hopefully this gives you a little light into what's going on. If you have any questions though, feel free to give us a shout. Like I said, I'm not an economist, but I'm in the real estate market every single day. So we get to see some of these things and how they're impacting clients all over the place. Hope to see you again soon. We'll catch you later.